Whenever we start learning a new programming language, the first program which we write is always a Hello World program. And we are going to do the same thing here. In this lecture, you will write your first JavaScript program. Now, in the introduction lecture, we learned that a client-side JavaScript program is always attached to a web page, that is, to an HTML document. And when this HTML document is loaded inside the browser, when the HTML document is rendered in the browser, the JavaScript code attached to this HTML document also gets executed. And there are two ways to attach a JavaScript program to an HTML document, using inline JavaScript and using external JavaScript. And we are going to learn about both the ways in this lecture. So let's first talk about writing inline JavaScript code. We can write JavaScript code in HTML document itself within the script tag of HTML. And this is called as inline JavaScript because we write JavaScript code in line with HTML. So for example, here we have written some HTML and in this HTML we are using this script tag. And within that script tag, we are writing some JavaScript code. So this JavaScript code is written in line with HTML and that's why it is called as inline JavaScript. Let's go to VS Code and here just before the closing body tag I will add a script tag and within this script tag we can write any JavaScript code. So here I will write a function the function is alert function and this alert function it is not part of JavaScript language it is provided by browsers so keep this point in mind this alert function it is not a part of JavaScript language but it is provided by browser and we can call this alert function from our JavaScript code and here let's simply say hello world and here as soon as I save the changes and if I come here if we refresh the page you will see that an alert window has been displayed here with the message hello world so this alert window it is being displayed by this alert function and the message which we are passing to it that has been displayed in this alert window so here we wrote our first JavaScript program using inline JavaScript in inline JavaScript Within the HTML document, we use script tag and within that script tag, we write all our JavaScript code. Here, we have a single line of JavaScript code, but if you want, you can write multiple lines of JavaScript code inside this script tag. Now, with this approach, there are two problems. The first problem is we are mixing HTML code with JavaScript. And because of this, the code will be less maintainable. And also here, we have very few HTML and JavaScript code. But in real world projects, you will have a lot of HTML code in your HTML document. And if you start writing your JavaScript code in that HTML document itself, the file will become quite large. So it's always a good practice to write your JavaScript code in a separate file and attach that file to this HTML document. In this way, you are keeping HTML code separate from JavaScript code, which provides a better maintainability of the code and the codes will also look cleaner. You have HTML in a separate file and you have JavaScript in a separate file. So it will also keep your code cleaner. And that's why we should always use the approach where we write our JavaScript code in a separate file and attach it to our HTML document. So we want to use an external JavaScript file in our HTML document. In this approach, what we do is we create a JavaScript file and for the JavaScript file, the extension is .js. So for example, let's say we create app.js file where we write all our JavaScript code and we can attach that JavaScript file to our HTML document using the source attribute of script tag. So here you see, using the source attribute, we are specifying the path of the JavaScript file, which we want to attach to this HTML document. And this source attribute, it is an attribute of this script tag. So now let's go back to VS Code. Let's remove the script tag from here and let's create a new file. So again, you can click on this new file button and here I'm going to call this file script. You can also call it app or you can name it anything. But the extension should be .js because in this file, we are going to write some JavaScript code. And a file which contains a JavaScript code, its extension should be .js. So let's press enter. 
and this script.js file has been created. Here again, let's write the alert function. So again, this alert function, it is going to show an alert window in the browser. And here, let's say, this is my first JavaScript program. Okay. Now let's save the changes. Let's go to the browser. And as soon as I refresh the page, you will see nothing is happening. Now, why is that? That's because we have created the script.js file. We have written some JavaScript code, but we have not attached the script.js file to our HTML file, right? This HTML file does not know about this script.js file. So when this HTML file will be rendered in the browser, since it is not pointing to the script.js file, browser will not know about the script.js file and it will not get executed. So now what we need to do is again, before the closing body tag, we will add a script tag. But this time for the script tag, we are also going to add the source attribute. And to this, we are going to assign the path of the script.js file. Currently, both index.html file and script.js file, they are present in the same folder. So here we can specify a relative path. So since both are present in the same folder, we can simply specify the name of the file, which is script.js. With this, let's save the changes. And now you will see as soon as I saved the change, this alert window has been displayed. And what it says? It says this is my first JavaScript program. The same message which we are specifying here to this alert function. So in this way, we are using an external JavaScript file for writing our JavaScript code, and we are attaching that external JavaScript file to index.html file. Now here we are specifying, we are using the script tag just before the closing body tag, but we can use this script tag anywhere in our HTML document. For example, I can also put it outside of the closing body tag here and the javascript code should still be working as you can see i can also put it in the head section so let me cut it from here and let's put it inside the head section just before the title if i save the changes it is still working the javascript code is still getting executed so you can add your script tag anywhere in the html document but there is a difference between when you add the script tag in the head section and when you add the script tag just before the closing body tag or after the closing body tag. For example, let's say in our HTML document, we have an input element. Let's say type equals text. Okay. And let's also specify a value. Let's say JavaScript. So here we have an input element. If I save the changes, you should see that input element in the web page with the value JavaScript. Now what I want is, from my JavaScript code, I want to access this input element and I want to change its value. For that, let me remove this alert function from here. So for that, again, browsers provides us a lot of functions which we can use to access the DOM elements. So for example, we can say document dot get element by ID. Now here, let's go to index.html and let's provide an ID here. Let's simply say name, okay? And using this ID, we are going to access this input element in the JavaScript. So here, let's pass the ID, which is name, and let's store it in a variable, okay? And now, this input variable, it is going to store this input element. So here, on the input element, we are going to access its value property and to that, we are going to assign another value, let's say modern JavaScript. Okay, so here we are writing some JavaScript code to access this input element from the web page and change its value. Now, if you don't understand this code, don't worry. We are going to talk about it in great detail in the future lectures of this course. For now, we are trying to understand where should we use this script tag in our HTML document. So currently, I'm using it inside this head section of the HTML document. Now let's save the changes here. Let's also save this script.js file. So it is already saved. Now, let me refresh the page. And you will see that the value inside this input element, it has not changed. It should change to modern JavaScript, but it has not changed. Now, we are not seeing any error also here, right? So what we will do is, here, every browser has a developer tool. So we are going to open that developer tool. 
and let's move it to the bottom and in the developer tool we need to go to this console tab okay let's close this one and there you will notice that we have an error it says we have an uncaught type error and it says cannot set properties of null setting value basically here this input is null now why is that because with this name id we have an input element in our html here we have an input element with the id name and we are trying to access it using get element by id method so it should return us that input element and on that input element we are trying to change its value but here it says it cannot set a property of null that means this input here it is for some reason null and the reason it is null is because we have put this script tag in the head section that means when this html document will be rendered in the browser this script.js file will be executed first before this h2 element and this input element will be created because again this html code it will be executed line by line so the script tag will be executed first in the script tag we are specifying the path of a javascript file so in this file this javascript code will be executed and after that only this h2 element and this input element will be rendered in the browser so by the time this script.js will be executed this input element is not rendered yet the input element with the id name is not rendered yet in the browser and that's why it is returning null now if i go ahead and if i move this script tag after the body section so let me move it just before the closing body tag or after the closing body tag so now first h2 element will be rendered and then input element will be rendered and after that only this script.js will be executed right so when this html document will be rendered in the browser and when it will reach to this line by that time the h2 element and the input element is already rendered in the browser and after that only this script tag will be executed and inside that this script.js file will be executed and when this script.js file will be executed this javascript code will be executed and by that time now this input element is already rendered so now we should not get any error and the value of that input element should change to modern javascript let's see that let's save the changes here let's also save the changes in html file and now you see we don't have any error and the text in this input element has changed to modern javascript so now when we have put the script.js file after the body tag it is working as expected because by that time this h2 and input element are already rendered in the web page so when we are trying to access that input element since it is already rendered we are able to access it and we are able to change its value but when we were using it in the head section in that case when the script.js file was getting executed by that time this input element was not rendered in the browser and that's why it was not able to access any input element with the id name so it was returning null and null was getting assigned to this input element i hope you got the point here so when you want to work with dom elements then it's always a good practice to put this script tag just after the closing body tag or just before the closing body tag because in this case what will happen is by the time the javascript file will get executed by that time all the dom elements are already rendered in the browser so the javascript code can access those dom elements and manipulate them so this is all from this lecture if you have any questions then feel free to ask it thank you for listening and have a great day